I discovered the need for this next set of demos or activities, as you were, when I was working with my students in the lab. You know, in the beginning of the year, you try to do some experiments that show the conservation of matter. So I had the students using baking soda and vinegar in a closed system. So we put a little bit of baking soda in a film canister and sealed up the film canister. And then we put vinegar in the baggie. And I told the students, the direction said to get, get as much air out of here as possible, so it was pretty flat. And they were going to take and determine the mass before and after a reaction took place. So the first thing they did is measure the mass of the baking soda and vinegar. Can you see that? I've got about 39.39 grams. Now, we're going to take the lid off the canister and just and have to make sure this is sealed tightly, but that was part of their directions. And we're going to allow the baking soda and vinegar to react. Now when I put this back on the balance, observe what happens as that bag inflates. All right. I'm trying to get this out of the way of that reading for you. All right. It actually loses mass on the reading. When I collected the lab reports, there were a few students who reported what they read. The majority of students reported no change in mass. Those who reported a change in mass told me it was because a gas was produced. They apparently believe that gases have negative mass. When I quest, which is a common misconception, it actually turns out that it gets more prevalent with age. Rosalind Driver has done some research on children's misconceptions, and according to her book, about a quarter of students at eight years old believe that air has negative mass. At 12 years old, three-fourths of the students believe that air has negative mass. In high school, two-thirds believe it has negative mass. So this was a real misconception. I talked to them, because I repeated it, and yes, it did weigh less, and I thought, oh, I know why. It's because that bag inflated. And if I had done the lab with a plastic bottle, I would have gotten different results. But the students didn't even come up with a reason that was, well, the baggie leaked. That wasn't, you know, they believed in the conservation of mass if there wasn't a gas involved. Right? They really thought that the gas had this lightness about it that was lifting things. So we repeat it, and this time, I'm going to put the baking soda in. Always warn the kids not to use too much baking soda. We don't really want the baggies popping. There's not too much danger with a soda bottle, but those baggies, they have to be careful. So I'm going to add a little vinegar in a test tube. and. Make sure that I get the top on tightly. Okay. Okay, and why don't I just tear this to zero? Okay, so now we know this is the mass it has. All right, I'm going to mix the baking soda and vinegar. Oh, I. I hope I have enough gas in there. The vinegar, I used to do it where I put the baking soda in the test tube and then I put the vinegar in the bottom of the beaker, but you know it is messier that way and, and it's sometimes hard to get the baking soda out of the test tube, but you can put a lot more vinegar in when you do it that way. Okay, anyway, we've got, with fluctuations in the room, it actually appears 
to be a tenth of a gram less, but that's give or take, or a hundredth of a gram. So that's within the error of the rule. Listen, you usually can hear the gas escape. All right. Now, let me put it back on the balance, though. And that's a good way to prove to the students a gas has mass. Okay, I'm getting a negative reading here of 0.25 grams. All right, so the gas does have mass. And now the, now the problem is to explain to them why, when I use the baggie, I've got a problem showing conservation of mass because I'm ignoring the buoyancy of air. Students have a hard time understanding why things float anyway. And a fluid is either a gas or a liquid. So the same principles that apply to things floating in water apply to things in air. Now, later we're going to do something with a hot air balloon or some other activities with gas laws where I really want them to understand why, the, why an increase in volume of the object is causing an apparent mass loss. So I found that using a spring scale with different size, the containers are all the same size, but they have different masses. And I do need a volunteer to help me read the spring scale. Come on up. Hello, Peg. Hello, Annis. All right. I would like you to do the readings. Okay. And I would like our other volunteer to write on the board. So Jan's going to, all right, would you t read that for me and tell me what the mass is when I weigh this in air? And that's in grams, so mm. it would be 130. Okay. Now we're going to put it in water so that it's submerged. Well, the mass is going down. Yes. Hmm. Uh, 80. 80. Okay, so we have an apparent mass loss when we put that in water. We've displaced a fluid, water in this case, right? Well, what do you suppose? Let's try some other things. Okay. Here's another one of these containers. Same size, but different mass. 70 grams. 70 grams. Let's put that in. 21? 20, 20, 21 grams. We'll call it 21. Okay. Okay. Now, Let's look at the board for a second. Jan, could you do a subtraction so we could look and see what the mass loss is here? You've got 50 grams, 49 grams. How about if I take another one, and I'll make it just a little bit heavier. Just don't lose your marbles. <laughs> All right. So, would you read that for me? Oh, uh, 140 140 grams. grams. Would you like to make a prediction? Well, it seems to be about 50 grams difference. How about 90? Do you, all right, let's try that. Ninety-two. All right. Spring scale isn't the best, is right. it? <laughs> okay. Now let me give you one. This one is what? Well, that's going to be a problem. That's only 24 grams to begin with. Oh. What do you suppose will happen when I put it in the water? Um, I don't know. The scale doesn't go past zero. So what do you think? It floats. It floats. Hmm. My goodness. And the scale reading is? Zero. Zero. Okay. Well, do you, do you want to make a prediction or do you want to think about why the difference was the same on those first three? Hmm. Um, you said something about displacing the water and they all look about the same size, so... Maybe they're all displacing the same amount of water? And what volume do you suppose they are? Water. One gram per milliliter, so 50 milliliters. I think you win. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Beck. What do I get? 
<laughs> okay. Here. <laughs> okay. Let's walk over here. According to Archimedes' principle, all objects that are suspended in a fluid, gas or a liquid, are buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. So if, you're 50, if your volume is 50 milliliters, and since the density of water is 1, we're going to have 50 grams times G, because obviously um, I'm, I'm using grams units, and I'm really talking about force if a, the physicist among us is going to be concerned about that. But what I want the students to realize is that baggie inflated. And since the baggie inflated, it was displacing air, and that air was pushing it up. Now, I can draw a force diagram for them, and I usually do. Say, look, when an object's at rest, the downward forces and the upward forces have to be balanced. So if something's floating, the upward force and the downward force have to be exactly equal. In the last case, I had a 24 gram times G. That was the downward force, which is actually the weight of the object. The spring scale gave a reading of zero. Okay, so if the spring scale gave a reading of zero, I had to have 24 grams times G, or my upward buoyancy equaled 24 times G. If it didn't, it would have flown right out of the beaker. So if the upward force is greater, you fly up. If the upward force is less, you sink. So in the case of something that has a downward force of 130 grams, that was the first object, the spring scale had an upward push, or was holding it with a force and that's the spring on the scale, of 80. It was stationary, though, so the forces had to be balanced. The difference was 50 grams times G, and this was the buoyancy caused by the displaced water. So I've done a little reviewing of things that they studied in earlier science classes when they talked about balanced forces. And I've set the stage for later work that I'm going to do on gas laws. And I've also emphasized to them that they need to read the data. They, don't need, they should not be writing down what they think the answer should be. And gases have mass. Thank you. I want to tell you a little bit about the setup. Um, these dropper bottles I bought I'm sure I got them out of the Flynn catalog. I kind of like them because the, the cap is attached, and you know how kids lose the caps all the time. But they also provided me with a nice little hook for use with the spring scale. It doesn't matter what size bottle you use. I've also done this with a much taller bottle that happened to have a hook on the top of it. So you need three or four bottles that are identical in size. And in fact, if you have one and you just keep changing the mass that you put in it, it works too. It, and you may have seen me on film. You may have caught the fact that I just put a few more BBs in one of the bottles for that um, one of the measurements. But I buy this shot at a store that sells guns and that sort of thing. I guess it, I call them BBs, but it's, it's shot. It's pretty inexpensive. And I use that for uh, providing the weight in these. And they're identical in size. So what you have to do is just make sure you have a spring scale that the, that's the right capacity. These aren't very heavy, so this spring scale goes from 0 to 200. The other setup that I have is the bottle's much bigger, so I have to use a spring scale that has a bigger capacity. And if you go down to the physics teacher, he may have a spring scale he'll, he'll give you. I usually have the kids do this as a lab activity rather than me do it as a demo. I have them collect the data, and then they can talk with each other and hopefully come up with the responses. Peg is my ideal student did today. Thank you.